Welcome to Fluida Moments, our podcast series where we will talk about what's it like to be a Fluidian, what we do every day, and what our culture is all about. This is your backstage pass to all things Fluida. Welcome to Fluida Moments, guys. This is uh, our uh, podcast series um, where we talk about what it's like to work at Fluido, uh, about our culture and all sorts of things. And today we're going to talk about customers. And um, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves and tell your story. Um, my name is Paulina Lout. Do you guys know that? But for the listeners and uh, head of people and culture at Fluido and, and very super happy actually to to do these podcasts. They're a lot of fun. So um, maybe we'll start with uh, you, Arian. Can you tell me who you are? Uh, how did you end up at Florida? Where you come from? What's your background? What's your story? Yeah, so um, I'm Arian and I I joined Florida almost exactly three years ago um, as a developer. I think originally I, I, I was recruited as a front-end developer, but uh, I gradually uh, evolved into all sorts of developer. <laughs> um, and um, my background is, well, uh, I've studied computer science. And before Fluido, I was working in the startup scene. So Fluido was different in many ways to me. First of all, uh, it was my first experience as a consultant. Um, and secondly, it was my first experience as a, uh, a working in a, a kind of a multinational company and with with large corporations. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of big projects and yeah. big customers, cool customers and over over 40 nationalities. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right now. So, yeah, it is I feel the same exactly what you said. Yeah. Um how about you? Tobias. <laughs> long long story. <laughs> we have all the time in the world. All the time in the world. Uh it goes back uh to the year 2009. Um, when I joined um, a small Salesforce consultancy in Frankfurt. Uh, and, you know, back then, um, during the interview, you know, my my um, boss at that time, he showed me a video from the Dreamforce. And that was exactly at the time when, you know, everybody was speaking about cloud computing and, and all the advantages and so forth. Uh, and I was working for a company which did the traditional software development. Uh, and I said, hey, you know, this stuff makes sense. So I joined I joined that company three years later. Um, I went to Finland. Uh, I looked up Fluido on the on the website. They had an app exchange package, you know, and I said, hey, they must be cool guys. They have an app exchange app. <laughs> we were cool. Oh, we are yeah. cool, yes. <laughs> so I, I applied, I got the job, and now I'm I'm here's a country service lead. Um, you know, how many years? Eight, eight and a half years after. Yeah, and I was your Florida friend. I remember. Yes. I remember. Yeah, so... And should we tell the desk story? We have to tell the desk story because we have the desk story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Arjen, do you know? I'm not sure. <laughs> stop me. Stop us if you have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, we were really small and um, uh, back then, I think 10, 12, 12 uh, employees. And um, so, Pauline and I were sharing a small IKEA desk. Pauline on one side, me on the other. There was not enough space for a monitor even. And um, we worked there day by day. Yeah, you, you really get to know know someone after eight and a half years, but more so after you've shared a desk for... for eight not, days. <laughs> <laughs> not, that, not that long, but... Yeah, but, it was a couple uh, of days. Yeah, yeah a couple yeah. of days we shared a desk yeah. and, and I kind of helped you to get started. But it was that time when we... Um, there was really no not much time to hang out in the office and we just... Went yeah, to customers yeah, yeah, and got exactly, started. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that actually gives us a nice segue to what we're going to be talking about today, which is customers. So so uh, all of the cool stuff that we do here at Fluido, a lot of it is for customers and because of customers and 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 with customers. So all kinds of things. So so um what's um what's your take? Because I know you have different angles to customer uh, work, you being the, the service lead for Finland now and and, mm -hmm. and you consulting architecture work and development and all sorts of different things. So Tobias, maybe you, if you could go first. What does, um, what does customers, um, what do they mean for you or, and, and how do you look at them? What's, what's the angle? It's of course, everything we do is for, for our customers. So there's, 
that's uh, the top priority uh, for me. So the customer is king, as you as you say, uh, in, in in some countries. Um, so what I what I really love uh, about doing is, um, I mean, if we are not fluido, but we are part of the customer's organization, so that we we speak with the customer as a team, and we say we. It's not there's the guys from Fluido, there's us, but it's us together as a team. So I think that is at least for me the most most enjoyable part. Yeah. How about how about you? What's the what's in it for you when you're working with customers? You know, I totally agree with Tobias that customer is king uh, or queen. And um, uh, for me, um, it's uh, I, I got into programming because I enjoyed solving problems. Uh, and also, I, I re- what, what, what's really meaningful to me is uh, trying to understand the customer's problems, things that uh, make their everyday work or life painful, and then try to come up with solutions to solve them or you know speed things up. I actually, when I came home yesterday, I, um, and I thought this might be, uh, so I'm, I, I was reading a magazine um, and it was about um, how do developers become really, really good developers? And one of the, the, um, um, the arguments that the person brought up was, you know, it's, it's not for the sake of writing code, but you develop to solve problems for our customers. And uh, that makes a developer a good developer. So he he tries to solve the problem, but uses the tools like developing to do it. Mm. Yeah. Do you relate to that? Yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> yeah. totally. And I think, well, uh, as as a developer, it's very important to try to see the big picture or the bigger picture, not only focus on the technical task that's given to you, but but you know the the user stories, the the underlying problems, the business processes. The overall architecture and the sort of mission and the the high level yeah. thing. What what is it that we're doing? Um, I want to grab though. I agree, customers king or queen. Um, also, however, um, do we always do what the customer tells us to do? Just kind of like okay, build <laughs> this. And I know it's a loaded question. So <laughs> Tobias, <laughs> um, friends don't let friends down is one of our values. So what? How does? Yeah, absolutely, it it, yeah. it depends. Uh, so. During busy times, then um, of course we do, you know. But um, I think the the best feedback we got from our customers is um, exactly then when we say, "Hey, hold on, don't do it like that." You know, there are different other ways, uh, and they might be on the long run, maybe you know, more more cost effective for you, or they 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 might be, you know, you don't block any road going in in, in, in you know further in the future. And um, as I said, the best feedback we get by by also challenging the ways of um, of developing the the Salesforce systems uh, forward. Yeah, yeah. How about how about if you are in a developer role, or you know, you're not, um, let's say, in a project management role, or or so you're you're in doing something where you have the user stories or or the business problem, and you go for it. Um, you know, you should raise your hand there as well. Do you get to do that? Yeah, I think um, when you're in a more technical role, um, at least I see the projects or requirements that come from the customer um, as falling into two different categories, either the ones that have very concrete uh, specifications. The customer already has some architecture, has really thought about it. They know exactly what they want. They come to us with like super uh, detailed specifications that, okay, you, you develop something that does this, does that, eventually produces this. Um, and then the other category is where the customer isn't really sure what they need themselves. Uh, so they they say that, okay, we have this thing, we want to improve it, or then we have these um, kind of bottlenecks in our process, what can we do about it? And I would say in both cases, it would really help to try to still be proactive. And if you see anything that you feel could be done differently or in a more more um, well in a better way. Then you should definitely raise your hand and say that hey, I think this is better, um, as Tobias said, in the long run. Or then um, you, with with a little more investment now, you could eventually reap the benefits uh, in the future. Yeah, and 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 that is our approach in a lot of cases, isn't it? So we just don't blindly do 
No, there's, there's, there's always these aha moments and okay, we have thought about it, but hey, I didn't know this is possible. And you guys told us, so these kind of things. And it, it can be a different uh, uh, technology. It can be, you know, but just telling, hey, with that customer A, which is very similar to you, uh, we've done something similar and um, would you like to look at it? And then usually they take, uh, you know, our customers can benefit from the, you know, the best parts of all our customer base, which are quite many. Yeah. And we do have this industry approach now also. Exactly. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So, so we have bundled our, our focus uh, on the industries. So we have uh, teams which are laser focused on, let's say, the manufacturing industry, for example. Uh, and what we can do here is um, um, exactly what I just explained. So we can take, hey, customer over here has a really, really big instance and they have solved this problem like this. Um, and we can use that knowledge and uh, re-implement. We don't need to start from the green grass. We, we, we can use accelerators uh, uh, to make it happen uh, faster and provide value to their end customers way faster than, than others. And that is the main purpose of the industry team uh, among some other responsibilities. Yeah. And, and, and we do that obviously with, with all of our projects, but that's a, just an example that came to my mind as well is this industry focus that we have. Yeah. There are similar, similar yeah, pro- yeah. processes. That and of course looking into, you know, other areas. I mean, the wider scope of Infosys opens up, you know, the world beyond uh, Salesforce and um, that can be artificial intelligence, it can be uh, RPA and, and, and things like that. Yeah, so it's not only Salesforce and not only particular projects, not only in Finland. Um, we've got all of these, these other options as well. Yeah. So um, what's, because you've done the whole, you've been working in projects and, and, and managing proje- projects and now now you're overseeing projects and all of that. So, um, you know, kind of high-level question, but what's it like to work with our customers? It's great. Um, you know, working with with the customers and seeing also the results. So um, I, I looked into, you know, the annual reports of our customers that we've been working with and I see success. And um, if, you, if you dig a little bit deeper, uh, I, I can feel that I have, you know, we or I uh, as a company... Um, that that we we are part of that success, and um, that that makes me feel proud a little bit. Uh, so saying that, hey, we have been there and helping our customers being successful in Finland, in other countries. Yeah, I I actually one of things that I love to do is when when you pick up a magazine and you see one of our customers explaining uh, what they've done. They don't necessarily mention us. They don't necessarily mention Salesforce, but you know that it is the process that that you've been working on, uh, you personally, or then then as a, as a, as a company. That's one of my favorite things things to do. And then, of course, we have those magazines out here for everyone to see, and everybody knows. It's this one. It's um. I mean, there, there are some Finnish companies who have been presenting at the Dreamforce. Uh, you know. I think that that's the top of the top that you can reach. I mean, our customer presenting a dream for us about, you know, parts that we have been doing. That's, that's pretty cool, I would say. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of their success is our success as well. And that's, that's what we're, we're aiming for. Um, so, Arjen, what's how about you? What's your favorite part of it? What's it like working with um, customers? Yeah, well, every customer is different, but... Um, what I enjoy the most is trying to build those um, human relationships as well with them, so that uh, so that you would be able to build trust, and then you would be able to work comfortably with them, communicate comfortably, be, be transparent about things uh, throughout the projects. And um, well, one of the funny things was that um, uh, actually not so long ago, um, I was visiting uh, this customer's office quite regularly, and at some point. Um, I was in a meeting with some people that I hadn't met before and until like halfway into the meeting, they didn't even realize that I'm, I'm an external, that I'm not in that organization. And then they were like, wait, you're from Fluid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you get to uh, 
what you were that's talking exactly, about. That's exactly, that's his we feeling. Yeah. Um, and, and then you're really, really, uh, you know, you're working as a team, you're working much quicker than um, um, than, than, than any anybody else, actually. Yeah, exactly. It's about like um, helping everyone realize that we are all in the in the same team or on the same side. We're all striving to solve the problems or make, make things better. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty nice feeling. Yeah. Um, how about, you know, we're talking about this customer, our customer success and customer experience and the experience that we're building uh, for them. And, and, um, and then, of course, close to my heart is the employee experience and, and all of that. So, um, Tobias, if we look at, you know, the way we work at Floydo, how does that translate to, to, to customer projects? Or cus- towards customers. Yeah, it's. Um, I think we are still working, you know, like a like a small startup with big scale, somehow. So what 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 I see is, um, you know, the the teams work really really well with with each other, um, and the project teams get the support from from outside as well as that that I've never seen anywhere before. So if something, you know, something needs to be solved or some experience, uh, you know needs to be looked at, then you can get it within sometimes minutes. Uh, and, and that, I think our customers, you know, can benefit a lot from that. But also internally, the people grow from the experience that the whole company has. So you're, you're not the lonely wolf, you know, sitting at the customer doing the work, but uh, you you grow by getting the whole knowledge of the whole company. And I think that is that is pretty unique in in, in a consulting organization like we are. Yeah, we, you, you get one of us, you get 330 of us mm. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. How about you? What's, what's your take on employee experience and customer experience? Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, uh, I, I see Fluido as a kind of a powerhouse of Salesforce. Well, not only Salesforce, but primarily Salesforce competence. And uh, I've always been fascinated at how... Um, all our colleagues are so willing to help when you ask for it. And Salesforce is a very um, large ecosystem with many different solutions. Uh, so there are different uh, colleagues who are specializing in different parts and no one knows everything, but this this feeling of being one full entity, uh, it really helps. And I think it also helps our customers quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? Like what... The, the culture that we have. Well, it comes from the the, the fluid of values of overall. Um, so friends don't let friends down. We always strive to help each other. Um, and also, we all believe in superheroes. Well, that's, yeah, superheroes. That's, that's, that's what we are and that's what we believe in. Yeah. And, and we are a very uh, value-led uh, company. And I, uh, you know, I think True. when we look at this, way of working together where do you think that comes from or are you do you agree with Aryan? yeah no I, I absolutely agree it's um i said it's um it's small teams which really work well together and um that that only works well because we execute these values you know in our daily daily life and that i think that is the secret for for the success that we have and um why our customers like us so much actually at in the morning i had one um, I spoke to one person, and uh, that person also mentioned to me that uh, um, that um, you know I really enjoy working with Fluido because our customer feels that the values that we have are implemented, uh, and you can see it in the work. And the, the team is so what motivated, and uh, it's such a good relationship even between the customer team and us. So that she was really excited about it. Yeah, and, and work is easier when you have fun and and you can trust and 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 you know you know your friend won't let you you down even if that friend is a customer and and yeah, not just yeah, inside. Exactly, the trust factor is uh, so. We will just do what needs to be done, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they can rely on us. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I sounds about right to my ear as well. And and um, we just finished with um, asking our employees what is important for them at work so so we did did um 
uh, the Signy questionnaire, uh, where instead of asking, you know, if things are some particular topic is good from one to t- a ten scale, um, we we ask them to uh, give us their five most meaningful factors at work or things at work, and and one thing that came. Th- through um, that is very important for our employees uh, is meaningful work. So um, when you look at meaningful work and everything that you just talked about, um, there's a relationship there, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when I just look at it and um, so it's, you know, the meaning of our work is, you know, make our customers successful. And um, I think we are, yeah, we are executing that on a on a on a daily level. Yeah, yeah, and and not just coding, but also trying to solve the problems. And yeah, so um, what's meaningful work for you? Well, exactly. I think we've been um, already mentioning this quite a lot in this discussion that um, it's about solving problems and and seeing that you're making an impact, like seeing seeing some uh, article about some process that you don't even need to receive recognition for it, but just, you know, knowing that, okay, they're actually using the solutions that we've been working on and they're, they're like, it's making their lives easier. It's making their processes faster. They're generating more revenue. They're, they're providing service to their own customers faster. Yeah. All, all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so, so we don't have people here who are just you know, I just work here um, <laughs> no. because the 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 fact that work has to be meaningful and there has to be mm. substance around it is important for our yeah yeah, yeah exactly and, and maybe also the, the meaning. Um, I mean, if if we, if we look at it, we have we have quite interesting projects, and also also from the technology angle. Um, I mean, if I now think about uh, certain projects that we've been doing, for example, if it uh, artificial intelligence. Um, if it's using some some new piece of technology, so there's even from from the technical angle, there's a lot of a uh, lot of meaning in it. So, yeah. yeah. Any particular favorite thing, without mentioning names too many <laughs> too much? Any particular favorite thing that you have done or been a part of? Or <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot now. I know. <laughs> no, 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 it's. Uh... Yeah, of course. I mean, I've, I've over the years, um, you have of course developed a good relationship with um, with our clients, and um, you know, it's it's almost like if you speak the same language, um, if if one person's customer starts a sentence and you can finish it uh, without talking about mm. it, um, that is of course then you know that's perfect, and um, I, I of course enjoyed that that time quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, you're in sync with the. Exactly. The customer and you know what they want even before they do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. That's that sounds sounds perfect. How how about you? Anything in particular that was uh, exciting to solve or? Yeah, well, I can think of many examples, but uh, maybe one of the nicest ones was um, when we were developing this custom mobile app, um, and we demoed it uh, to different actually end users um, from across the globe and and we were receiving feedback from them that hey this feature is something that we know already we're going to be using a lot um, so it was it was really nice to talk you know not just to the stakeholders or the or the process owners but but actually to the actual end users who would be eventually using that app and then of course we we, we also had um, statistics on the usage of the app and after a while we checked and we saw that the adoption rate has been quite high people are actually using it <laughs> people are actually you sound surprised <laughs> like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no those are those are good moments mm. yeah yeah so so it's um yeah it's always great when um when you get the feeling of Oh wow! People are actually using using our our system. Um, I had a one more question for you guys, um, and that is that is um, out of all of the cool stuff that you've done um, at Fluida and so forth. Um, what's your Fluida moment? Tobias, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you didn't think about this already. <laughs> no, that comes as a surprise now. 
No, I think it's, well, there were, of course, you know, certain goal lives and all these things where you can say, hey, this is it. Uh, of course, it was B when, uh, it, you know, when, when you, for example, became, you know, the country service lead. That, that was pretty, you know, I said, hey, you know, I came here eight years ago. Um, I didn't even know where Finland was on the map. <laughs> uh, that was yeah okay that was that was before that's actually a fun story if I can tell that yes um, please do oh, I want to hear this one so before coming to Finland I studied in Sweden uh, and I did so because a teacher came and said hey we have in Scandinavia we have some chance to study I said yeah why not <laughs> so I bought a train ticket um, to Christianstadt in Sweden but by accident, I bought one, I think there's a town, Christian Sand or something like that in Norway. And I really didn't know, um, you know, I did not even know where Finland is. And now I'm, I'm the country service leader of Finland after, you know, eight and a half all years. those years. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that was a great moment. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. How, how about you? What's your Florida moment? Yeah. Again, there are a lot, but I would say my fluido moment is kind of a time period, not just one moment. It's the maybe first few weeks that I uh, I joined fluido, apart from the really nice boot camp. Uh, immediately, the the, the uh, developers and colleagues that I, I was sitting next to were very welcoming, and they even got me into actual projects pretty much straight after the boot camp. They they introduced me to the clients that they had already known and been working with and they were um, I came um, with very little knowledge of Salesforce so they were also very supportive uh, with all my stupid questions trying to figure out how everything works and it was just amazing that I felt welcome from day one yeah that's good that's good um all right well well um that's it you guys that was 25 minutes um we have an um we have a website for this podcast so fluidamoments.com where you can go and have a look at this clip and others thank you guys for taking the time to be here i know you're both um extremely busy so so uh i very much appreciate that and thank you thank yeah. you Pauline. thank you thank you Great. all right